Hi, it's Kelsey with Shipwreck Beats, and today we are going to make a riveted rhinestone leather cuff bracelet. Um, I don't know if you know this, which actually if you watch these videos you probably do, but I'm on Twitch two days a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1.30 Pacific Time around 1.30 uh, is when I shoot for. But we've been doing some great projects on Twitch and I wanted to share with you in today's video one of those projects because it turned out really well and I know not many of you tune into the Twitch videos but I want I want you all to see what you're missing out on. So hi Pam, welcome today, happy Wednesday. Um, yeah, so if you watch the Twitch videos this is gonna be a little bit of a review for you but if you don't then I think you're in for a real treat because this is a really fun project. Um, so what we did on Twitch last week is I made, hi Carla, um, some leather cuff bracelets. Good morning, Diane. And so this was a cuff bracelet that was just a plain black cuff bracelet that we took some gold acrylic paint and a stamp, like a rubber stamp, texture stamp, and stamped some texture onto here, um, which is fine. It looks great. It's got some shimmery gold to it, but I want to do more. And so I'm going to show you how to make a bracelet like this with the rhinestones attached. So we're, that's what we're going to do today. This was one of the ones that we made on Twitch. Um, and that's twitch.tv slash shipwreckbeads. Again, we're there Tuesday and Thursday at around 1.30. Um, so last week what we did is we just experimented with some leather. We painted it and decorated it. And then on the following video, we embellished it. Um, so this was one of the pieces that we did. Here's the silver version of the same one. This one, a little bit different, a little more movement to it. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning, Roxanne and Simone and Carlene. Uh, let's see, and make sure I didn't forget anybody. And then we also made, I'm actually wearing it today, this riveted bracelet here, which has been my favorite. I've been wearing it for the last couple days. Got some Tierra Cast components riveted on. And again, this was stamped and painted. Hi, Shelly. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be making, we're gonna be embellishing this leather strap bracelet that we painted and that I never got a chance to actually finish. So that's what we're gonna to do today. So the tools that I'm using, um, I'm gonna be using the Create Recklessly Leather Tool Kit. This is a great little set. Um, it's got all these pieces that'll do pretty much everything you need for leather. Hi Cindy, hi Angel. So we've got your tool piece and then all of the little different heads screw into this tool. So there's stuff for poking holes. It's got a little hole punch here. Got some lacing punches. We're going to be using this guy. And there's also some eyelet setters. And we're going to be using the eyelet setter as well. And then of course you've got your little anvil for punching or for stamping. All right. I also have with me my rubber mat to sort of dampen the sound. We've got the leather tool kit from, this is part of the Create Recklessly leather, tool li leather line. And so this is what we'll be, be using that. Got a ruler and hammer. So we've got all our tools ready to go. And of course we've got eyelets and washers as well. We'll need those. So it's a great set, Simone. I use it all the time. All right, we're gonna angle you down. So we're going to start by measuring on the back of our bracelet where we're going to punch our holes. So I just want to do them like every inch. And I'm just marking with a pencil. Chalk would probably work better, but I don't. Actually, I might have some chalk. I don't think I do. Never mind. So we're just going to measure every inch and just put a line because that's where I'm going to put in my rivets. All right. So now going to take our Create Recklessly tool set and I'm going to use the spot piercer because I'm going to 
poke, I'm going to poke holes in it first, and then I'm going to go back with my um, rotary hole punch, and I'm going to punch holes that are going to be big enough for my eyelets to go through. Oh, you're saying you're not okay. Yeah, Ginger, you're not sending it to me. I don't get those emails, so I have not seen it yet. Send it to Kelsey at shipwreckbeads.com, and that's K-E-L-S-Y. So send it directly to me. Because the I, I probably won't see that. But yeah, K-E-L-S-Y at shipwreckbeads.com. And then you can you can and then I'll see your email. So no, I have not seen it yet, Ginger. Okay, so I marked every inch and now I'm going to center up. And I'm just gonna eyeball it. I suppose you could measure it if you wanted, but y'all know me, I don't do that. So now I'm gonna punch holes on every line that I made. And so you just give it a good hard whack, and this is one of those like self-healing mats, so if you poke into the plastic, it's not gonna harm it. But all I'm doing right now is just giving myself some holes that I'm gonna punch over with my rotary punch here in a second. So all I'm doing now is poking holes in the leather. And so that's going to give me two evenly spaced holes. And now I'm going to go over with my rotary hole punch and it's at the two millimeter size. Hi Jane, happy new year to you. And I'm going to go over and I'm going to punch out each of the little holes that I just pierced. And this is where we're actually going to set our eyelets into. And you could just measure, you could just mark your holes and then do all of your punching with the rotary punch. But I just prefer to use that spot piercer because it's going to give me two evenly spaced holes. Yes, we, anything that I use in these videos, we sell at the store. So yes, we do sell this. This is a rotary hole punch. And I'll go, I will put up the links to all of the stuff once we're finished with the video. But yeah, anything I show, anything I demo in the videos for Shipwreck Beads is sold by Shipwreck Beads. Otherwise I wouldn't be using it, so. So yes. Okay, so now I've got my holes all punched in there. You can see, got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to do 14 rivets. And now I've got my bench block. And we've got eyelets. Open this bag up. And these are the 2.2 um, millimeter, 2.2 2 by 3.7 millimeter eyelets by TierraCast. There are different size eyelets, and this is the smallest one. The different size eyelets have different size posts, so if you want to do any stacking with your materials, like how I did here, you're going to want to use a different size eyelet. But for what we're doing today, we want to use the smallest one. So I'm going to switch out my tool here. And what I've got now is the small eyelet setter. 
You can buy just the eyelet setting tool as its own spe um, singular piece if you don't want to invest in the whole Create Recklessly tool set. It is a really good investment though. It, you're going to get a lot of, you get a lot of bang for your buck. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I put my eyelet through coming out the back and then I put a washer over it. So when you go to hammer down your eyelet with the eyelet tool, you can see it's got the little little cone in the center there. That's going to take the end of your eyelet. Let's see. Hold it so you can see it. And it's going to flare that down. And by putting the washer over that, it's going to prevent the leather from stretching and prevent your eyelet from popping out, which can happen over time. So that washer is going to protect your eyelet and, and give it something to hang on to. You can see on these ones here, I've got my... So this is where it's going to get a little loud, and I'm apologizing. I'm going to apologize in advance, but we're going to go ahead and hammer this eyelet down. All the products. It happens to all the projects. Uh, no, they're not available to buy. We use them in ads, and um, they get put on display in our showroom for um, examples for our customers. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and hammer. And when I'm setting an eyelet, I try and kind of turn it a little bit like that as I'm hammering because that's going to give it sort of a more uniform and make sure you get all of the edges of your eyelet. So then you want to check it and you want to make sure that uh, it's nice and flat that you've got it all the way hammered down. But it doesn't take much. You need to be firm with it, but you don't want to hammer it too hard. Because if you hammer too hard, then you're going to misshape your eyelet. You don't want that to happen. So see, it doesn't take too much force to get that to work. You can see the eyelets are in there. And if you wanted, you could use a different color eyelet to have sort of a contrasting color there. I just wanted to keep it simple for this one since the sparkle on there is really going to make the bracelet pop. You can also do this by just um, this project by just punching the holes and not riveting it or sorry not putting the eyelets in if you wanted you can just lace straight through the leather you don't have to use the, eye, the uh, eyelets but I like it just gives it a little bit more of a finished look to have those eyelets in there So when you're punching your holes for your eyelets, you want to have the smallest hole you can possibly have for the eyelet to squish through. If you make it too big, then you're not it's going to be too loose when you go to put your eyelet in and it can fall off. So you want to have just enough space for that eyelet to pop through. And sometimes you're going to need to force it through depending on the size of your hole. But it's better to force it through than to have it just go through easily because then it might be too loose for you. So I'll show you what I used to create the pattern on the bracelet. So this is a, a molding mat for PMC clay. It's precious metal clay. And I used this pattern and some gold paint. 
and then just painted it on and then stamped it on there and then I took my brush and kind of dry brushed over some areas so that you wouldn't see the seams as much and uh, but yeah so that's just a really easy technique that you can do with um, I use a special leather acrylic paint but you can use any kind of paint um, and then yeah this is just like a rubber stamp mat and then stamp that texture on there so really this is just a nice cuff as is you don't necessarily need to embellish it further but I've never been one to leave things alone so especially when it comes to sparkles I love all the hearts. All right. Three more rivets and we're done hammering for now. So, well, maybe three more. This one will go through. There it goes. So when you get to the end, because you don't want to accidentally hammer on your button or your snap, I always put it close to the edge so that my snap hangs off. Um, we do not carry white leather blanks, Angel, but we do carry the snaps and we carry leather straps and we make and you can make your own. So the leather strap we sell just the plain leather strap with no design on it and then I paint I uh, stamped the design on there um, so Angel what we did yeah so this bracelet here is actually one that I made with a um, unfinished leather strap we sell them by the meter and then I cut it down and then added the snaps myself so you can always do that if you've got a color leather that you want to make a bracelet out of that we don't uh, have in the pre-made But yeah, so Stacy, to answer your question, I used a plain leather blank. So we do sell the leather strap bracelets. It's just plain black. And then I stamped the pattern on with gold paint and then this um, molding mat, which is basically just a rubber stamp mat. Edge there. Where's my tool? There it is. All right, so now all of our eyelets are set. And I kind of do wish I would have done that in a contrasting color, but that's okay. So we've got all our eyelets on there. I'm going to switch to a bead mat over this. And so now we're going to take our rhinestone banding or cup chain or whatever you want to call it. And I've got some artificial sinew that I'm going to use to string with. So I'm going to start at one end and I'm going to thread my cord through the first set of eyelets. And then I'm going to take my cup chain and I'm going to tie it on. So I'm going to make sure that that first crystal is up above the knot so that I'm going to tie in between the two, the first two crystals. And I'm going to tie a double knot. 
And I will go back through and reinforce these knots with glue just to make sure they, the sinew knots pretty well, so um, it shouldn't come apart, but a little bit of glue never hurt anybody. So we're gonna add some glue to it just to reinforce those when we're done. Okay, so now we're gonna go and tie through the next set of eyelets. Okay, so now that's attached there. And I'm not gonna trim this until I'm, I'm completely done um, tying my cord, or tying my crystal on. Because I wanna make sure that that's nice and that I've got my length right. Okay. So it looks like it's about every four crystals is where I'm tying my knot in. Oh, that falls right in between there. You might have to play with the amount of crystals. See, I don't want that to move that much. I'm gonna do less. So one reason I'm using the sinew for the cord to tie this on is because it gives a really nice fray when it's stitched on there. Did you really share some pictures, Deb? Or Debbie, sorry. <laughs> I would love to see what you came up with. It's one of my favorite things when I get to see what you guys have made from my my videos. But yeah, so this is this is one we've done on Twitch. Can you post links? Yeah, I always do that. And um Make sure you're watching us on Twitch because you'll get to see these videos firsthand. You'll actually, you can go back and watch some of the past Twitch videos and you can see how I actually painted and made the leather cuffs from the basic supplies instead of using the pre-made ones. Used embroidery floss. Oh, that would be cool. Mm. Well, that's a bummer, Stacy. one more stitch to make. Yeah, wax linen would work really well, I think. I just think one of my favorite parts about it is um, the way the cord frays at the end and just I love that look of the sort of rustic, messy, and then the, you know, the sparkly, like classy element of the crystals kind of. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and trim this now if I can find my cutters, which are right here. Tie that on. Okay. 
Okay, so now we're going to add some glue to make sure and reinforce these knots. And so I'm using the GS Hypo Cement. It's usually the knot that I use for um, glue, small gluing projects because it's got a really fine, when it's not all gummed up, it's got a really fine tip. So you can really get into those little spaces. And you wanna make sure not to get it on any of your crystals. But just a little dot of glue on each one is all you need. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim my cords up. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail because again we're going to fray those out. Kind of does it on his own since my scissors are getting a little dull. You know, I haven't tried to go back and watch any of the videos or anything like that on Twitch. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Naughty Knoll, one of these guys, and just kind of pull apart these fibers on the cord because I want them to fray or I want them to be frayed out. And you know, I don't know if it's different on mobile too, so that might be the problem. I have gone back and looked at some of the videos and I know they load for me fine on the computer, but I don't, I've never tried doing it on mobile for Twitch, so I don't know about that. So we're just fraying this cord. I really like the fringy look that it adds. All right, so there is our finished bracelet. Got a nice little rhinestone embellishment. Hmm. Yeah, the glue keeps the knot together, so the so then you spread out the fibers and it gives you just kind of this fringy look. And you can actually kind of see it better on this one since the black cord kind of blends in. But you can see how the sinew just frays really nicely and it gives it that like really rustic sort of rhinestone cowboy kind of look. So that's how we make the rhinestone cuff bracelet. And you, you can just add this straight to a black the black cuff. You don't even have to paint it to add that extra embellishment. But again, why not? So there's here's three different styles. Huh, well I don't know then. It, you know, it's so hard because everybody's different mobile devices or computers or what browser you're using. It all makes such a huge difference when you're doing, you know, watching the live broadcasts and things like that. So it's hard for me to troubleshoot on my end what might be your problem. But um, but yeah, so here is today's project. Again, we made this little cuff bracelet and also just wanted to encourage you to check out our Twitch videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1.30 Pacific time. We'll angle you back up. Um, tomorrow on Twitch, we're going to be finished. We, yesterday on Twitch, we played around with the Sarah Loon two-part epoxy crystal clay by Swarovski, and we made a couple of diff a few different components. And so on tomorrow's Twitch show, we're going to be making jewelry with those components. So I'm really excited um, about tomorrow's Twitch show, which will be at 1:30 Pacific time. So I hope you can tune in and catch it. Um, ooh, sorry, Silk. Yeah, that would look really cool, Debbie. 
I like that idea. We've got some silk ribbon that we don't carry sari silk, <clears throat> but we do carry some silk 